Hello listeners, tonight the story chair will help me tell you the story of Urashima Taro. It's a very, very old fairy tale from Japan. It's well known to the Japanese, but also famous in other countries too. The unusual ending just might surprise you. Let's begin. In ancient Japan, there lived a young fisherman named Urashima Taro. He was a kind man who lived a simple life caring for his elderly parents. They all lived in a little house with a small pond in front. Each morning, Urashima would leave his house and paddle his tiny boat out into the ocean and fish all day long. On good days, he would catch a basket full of fish, which he would sell to the market for a few coins. With this money, he would buy rice and vegetables, and along with the fish he caught, Urashima and his old parents had enough to eat. Day after day, and year after year, Urashima's life was the same. But he provided for his family and was well liked by the people he knew. One day, as he walked to the beach, Urashima came upon three village boys tormenting a little sea turtle. They were poking the turtle with sticks and kicking at the poor creature. Stop that, yelled Urashima. The boys smart mouthed back at him. We found it and we can do what we want to it. Urashima could see that the turtle's eyes were filled with tears. Urashima reached into his kimono and pulled out three coins. He held them out to the boys and said, Here, I will buy the turtle from you. <laughs> the greedy boys took the money, let's buy candy, and ran away. <laughs> the fisherman waded into the shallows with the turtle and released her. Be careful, he told the little turtle. Have a good life. The turtle looked back at him and then swam away. Ichi ni sanchi goroko hichi hachi kuju. The next day, as he walked along the beach, a giant sea turtle swam onto shore. To his amazement, the turtle spoke to him. Yesterday, you saved the life of Princess Otohime, who had taken the shape of a turtle to visit the land. The princess wishes to reward you and invite you to visit the Grand Palace of the Dragon King, which lies deep under the sea. There, you will enjoy many delights. Urashima was excited at having the idea of an adventure and climbed onto the shell of the giant turtle. They swam many miles out to sea and then the turtle dove down below the surface. At first, Urashima was frightened that he would drown. But the enchanted turtle had used his magic powers to allow Urashima to breathe underwater. Deeper and deeper the sea turtle took him until they reached the bottom of the ocean. Suddenly, there it was, the shimmering golden palace of the Dragon King. They swam through the giant doors into a beautifully decorated hall. Exquisitely painted screens and silk tapestries lined the walls. An escort of brightly colored fish swam alongside them, leading the way to meet the princess. The princess appeared in a golden robe. She was a beautiful woman. Urashima Taro, thank you for saving my life. Please enjoy the many pleasures of the palace and stay 
as long as you wish. Urashima lay down on silk cushions as the entertainment began. The palace performers were the finest in the world and they were performing for him alone. Sumptuous food was prepared for Urashima and he dined on delicious morsels. Skilled musicians played beautiful melodies as graceful dancers whirled round and round. Magically, the sea came alive with singing fish who circled dizzily in flashes of color. Crab acrobats performed somersaults, clicking their claws in time to the music. It was the most wonderful entertainment that Urashima had ever seen. Unaccustomed to such indulgence, the poor fisherman was intoxicated by all that his eyes and stomach consumed. Even at night, all of Urashima's desires were fulfilled. The food and drink and shows went on endlessly. On and on and on it went as Urashima breathed in his good fortune. One day turned into the next, and Urashima was enjoying himself so much that he lost track of time. After three days, he began to think of home and the welfare of his old parents. If only my friends were here to enjoy these pleasures along with me, he thought. Urashima was homesick. He decided to address the Princess Otohime. Princess, I am most honored and grateful for the hospitality you have shown me, but I must return home. Gently, she replied, I am most saddened to hear this, but I understand. Here, take this gift with you. Otohime presented him with a beautifully decorated box. This box contains the time you have spent here. If you hold onto it without opening it, you will never grow old. If you open it up, time will return to normal. But I must warn you, you must never open the box. Do you promise? Urashima Taro? Urashima promised and thanked the princess, then climbed back onto the giant sea turtle. And they swam out of the palace and on up to the surface. When they reached the shore, Urashima bid the turtle goodbye and began walking towards his village. <laughs> But something was very odd. All the houses he had known were no longer there. The streets were different and the people were different. He recognized no one. The villagers stared at him, suspicious of this young stranger that was amongst them. When Urashima spotted the pond, that had been outside his house, he ran to it excitedly. But to his disappointment, a different house stood where his had been. He was dumbfounded and fell to his knees in despair. Just then, an old man came out of the house. Urashima stood and said, I am Urashima Taro. Do you know me? Can you tell me where my parents have gone? The old man looked at him curiously. I have heard that name before. When I was a boy, my grandfather told me the story of Urashima Taro, who had lived some 300 years ago. The legend goes that Urashima rode off into the sea on the back of an enchanted turtle never to return again. 300 years ago? That cannot be. That means that my parents are dead and everyone I know is long gone. The old man became annoyed. 
Get off of my property. I refuse to talk to a liar who claims he is over 300 years old. And he went back into the house. Urashima began to weep as he longed for his former life. But wait, he thought, I have the magic box that will return everything back to normal. But why would the princess warn me never to open it? I don't care, he moaned, and opened the lid. White smoke streamed from the box and encircled him as time returned to normal. His parents would live again and his village would be just as he had left it. But Urashima had not heeded the warning, for it was the magic locked inside the box that was keeping his 300-year-old body young. As the smoke slowly cleared, Urashima felt a change come over him. His body was racked with pain, and he stumbled over to the pond and looked at his reflection. To his horror, he saw that his hair had turned white and a long white beard had grown from his chin and his face, it was covered in wrinkles. He was all bent over and his joints screamed with the pain of old age. What has happened to me? He cried. I'm a dying old man. <sighs> Slowly, he crumpled to the ground and his body turned to dust. A little breeze came up and carried the dust out to sea. Well, that story had a really dark ending, don't you think? And that's contrary to most Western stories that almost always end happily. So why would you think the Japanese would tell this to their children? Well, in my opinion, it's to help prepare them for the real world of adulthood. To teach them that, just as in life, all stories do not end well. You know, I think that the parent who paints only a pretty picture and hides the dangers in life is failing their children and actually falling down on their parenting. There are other lessons as well. Can you come up with any more? One would be that just because you do someone a good turn, don't expect to be rewarded in the end. Also, if you break a promise, expect to pay the consequences. Possibly another is, be content with your life because it could be a lot worse. And lastly, bad things can and do happen to good people as well. We'll see you next time.